five key stages to my Obsidian workflow. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about my workflow for idea creation and content generation. There are a lot of courses now available that show you how to start using Obsidian, but sometimes these are a bit overwhelming because there are so many ways to implement your workflow. Recently, I've been asked a lot of questions about how I set mine up. Over the years, I've benefited greatly from other YouTubers and bloggers sharing their workflows, so I thought I'd do the same with mine. So in this video, I'll walk through five of the essential features of my workflow with Obsidian. I'll go through how I use block reference features in my workflow. By the end of the video, I hope you'll see some opportunity to use these features in your workflow to save you time developing your process and helping you focus on creating new ideas. If you're interested in more techniques, tools and hacks for your workflow, please subscribe to my channel. If you enjoy the content and found it useful, please press like so I know to make similar content. Workflow Overview the goal of my workflow is to create content every week that is interesting to me and provide a different perspective to what is out there currently. To do this, I study and research content around personal workflows that are already out there. Researching involves me looking at different sources. Some of the current sources I use are Twitter, Feedly, YouTube, Kindle Books, Podcasts, Feedback from Viewers and Reddit. For each source, I extract and highlight areas that resonate with me and pick out the ones that I would like to write about or explore further. Each of these highlights is a source note in Obsidian. When I create a source note in Obsidian, I have a template that I follow. The template covers metadata about the source, summary of the source information, and my views on the source material. As part of the metadata of the source note, I capture a set of tags using the hashtag symbol. The purpose of the tag is to capture the concept of the source note. These could be one or two words that describe a technique, tool, or a hack. The tags are one of the ways I generate ideas. So using these tags, I create permanent note, which represents an idea. The permanent note travels through various stages as I enrich the idea. Moving between stages involves linking to tags or source notes or researching further into an idea. Sometimes I may have a random idea that I create a permanent note straight into Obsidian. Once I fully enrich permanent note, this becomes the basis of making content for various platforms. Currently, I use it for Twitter. You can follow me at civ underscore UK for daily updates on personal workflows, blog, and YouTube. I'll now break down each component into further details. Sources. The source of information that I consume comes from various places. The most common ones are Twitter. I capture Twitter threads. These are digested content that people have created on various subjects. I've started using Readwise to capture tweets into Obsidian. Feedly. These are articles from blogs that I follow. If there is something that resonates with me, I usually create notes on these using iOS shortcut straight into Obsidian. YouTube. I consume a lot of YouTube channels. If there's something of interest, again, I create notes on Obsidian. Kindle books. I'm a fan of the 99p Kindle book deals. I usually buy it and read it on the Kindle. I highlight various sections using the Kindle or Kindle app and import them into Obsidian using Readwise. Podcasts. I only listen to a few podcasts, but when I do, I usually listen to it using Overcast app on the iPhone. When there is something I'm interested in, I use the Overcast app to create a link to the podcast with a time range, which I use to make an Obsidian note. Feedback. These are viewer feedback that you guys provided via the comment section. I create a Obsidian note, so I use it to improve content later. Reddit. I use this to capture questions and answers people have raised. I usually copy and paste to create a note in Obsidian. Regardless of the source, if there's something that resonates with me, I capture it as a source note in Obsidian. I divide my source notes into three sections. Source details, these are the metadata for the source to help me find it again. Notes, my summary of the source information. Comments on source, my thoughts on the source information. Let's go through one. I use the Zettelkasten plugin to generate source notes. I use the Zettelkasten ID to keep my notes file name unique. Most people don't use this, but I find it helpful from a reference point of view. I then enter the author's name. I add in a title, which I also use as part of the file name. For the type of content, I link the notes to a typed note, so I know if it is a book or a website, etc. I add the website details. Within the notes section, I try and define the source information in my own words. I try and list out the quotes that resonate with me. I also look for key takeaways from the source material. 
comment on source section covers a list of prompts that help me think about what I consume and how it relates to other parts of my notes. All my source notes live in the source note folder. Following the changes in graph view, I have invested more time to tag my source notes. The reason I use tags is to give context around the source notes. Since each vault has its own topics, I can use tags that are related to that topic. Start with ideas or areas to research further. I also use them for keyword analysis to see if other people are interested in the content. Please have a look at my Obsidian Graph View video to see more details of how I'm using tags. The three main purposes of permanent notes are 1. Act as the start of my ideas 2. A place where I can enrich my ideas 3. A note that links my ideas, tags and source notes together Let's look at one that I've created Within the permanent folder, I have different stages which reflect the life cycle of a permanent idea It starts as an idea Once I've developed a good perspective of the idea, it moves to the plan stage where I enrich it some more I then move it to a monthly roadmap folder so I know when I need to make content for one of my platforms. Once complete, I move it to the complete folder. When I work on a permanent note, I often use Typora. I like using Typora as it's less cluttered and when you use Markdown, it can show it to you in the final view without switching views like I need to do in Obsidian. To do this, I set up Typora as the default app to open Markdown files. Obsidian then becomes the tool to search for information. As you type in Typora, Obsidian refreshes the permanent note automatically. The permanent note usually starts with a title. I capture the tags and links to the relevant source notes. I found links to different sections of source notes by adding the heading name after a hashtag. I use tags to find more relevant sources and use Google if I want to search further. I'm adding a new source note where appropriate. My permanent note usually starts with the bullet points. From there, I enrich it with other related information. Once complete, if I'm happy with it, I move it to my script writing workflow. Obsidian 0.96 release had implemented a block reference into the product. A lot of videos are available to show you how it works. From watching Rome videos, I knew exactly how I want to use it in my workflow. The purpose of using block reference is to make my life easier and streamline my workflow. Hopefully the way I'm using it will help you. The two ways I use block references are track the detailed status of my permanent note, capture key paragraphs in my notes that I can use for tweets on my Twitter account. Let's have a look at each use case. Each permanent note has a status. I created a block reference for this by using the space caret with the text called status. I then started a tracker note. In the tracker note, I made a table in Markdown. In the first column, I have a link to the permanent note. In the second column, I link the block reference. To create this link, you need to add the back link as usual, but add hashtag caret and the text, in my case status. You'll also need to add the exclamation mark at the front to bring back the contents of the block reference. When you switch to preview mode, it shows a table with each permanent note and the status of each note. Each time I'm working on a reference note, I update the status. I refer back to this tracker note to see the detailed status of each permanent note that I'm working on. This allows me to decide which one to work on without having to go through each note. The next use case is capturing tweets. If there is something in Obsidian note that I think I can tweet rather than wait for it to become video, I can use the space caret tweet on the paragraph. I then add this to my tweet note using the same method as before. When I'm looking for a tweet to send on Twitter, I refer to my tweet note to find one that I could use. If I update the paragraph on the note, it will automatically update on the tweet note, so I will always have the most up-to-date version of this. Obsidian block references allow the opportunity to improve your workflow. There are many uses of it, but it only becomes valuable if it's part of your workflow. Summary. In this video, I shared with you my current workflow for creating content. Please remember to like if you found it useful and subscribe if you want more updates. I have a sort of sources of information that I regularly consume. Where a source content resonates with me, I create source notes in Obsidian. I tag source notes by using tags that describe the information. I make permanent notes when I have an idea for content. I use block references to track the status of permanent notes and recycle my permanent notes to serve different purposes. Thank you for watching. If this video was useful, please check out some of my other videos. Goodbye for now.